and welcome back to Indiethon, raising money for Child's Play. Indiethon is sponsored by Chucklefish and by Team17. Team17 are an independent indie developer and publisher and they have kindly provided us with our awesome grand prize. Team17 and Infinigon Games' story-driven adventure game Epic Chef is out now on PC, Switch, Xbox One and PS4. In the meantime, we now have a, another run for you, and this is a glitchless one-player run of the game Struggling by Sparky McElk1. Take it away, Sparky. Thank you, Ruffle Bricks. Um, I, uh, I'm excited to be here with you guys uh, for the next hour or so, hopefully less than an hour. Um, I've got a lot to say about this game, but uh, I'm going to dive right in. Uh, we can talk about the game as we go on. Um, but yeah, I am Sparky. I'm running Struggling. Um, this is a very uh, what-the-heck kind of game. If you're just joining now, uh, you are in for a treat. Um, so well, we will get right into it. Uh, so time starts um, when I hit start. So I will give you a nice countdown for the start of the run. And then we're off to the races, and then we're then we're going. So here we go, uh, starting the run in three, two, one, start. All right. So like I said, um, we we've got like an hour uh, together here, um, but I've I've got a lot. You know, there's a lot going on in here. The basics of this game are is it is a it is a 2D physics platformer. Um, we are trying to get from. The left side of the screen to the right side of the screen <laughs> um, by traversing various um, obstacles and um, and platforms and, and whatnot. Um, but we are this creature right here. Uh, this creature's name is Troy. We are what what's called in this world an abomination. Um, and and abominations are essentially these kind of like. Uh, mutants, I guess you could call them. They have like various deformities. Uh, you'll see that Troy is obviously just a head and arms. Um, Troy is a combination of the two characters, um, Hector and Achilles. Uh, so uh, <laughs> the story of this game is that uh, you know this world is, is full of abominations, and there were these abomination gods that were. Uh, kind of saviors of the world, but then they got cast out because there were false gods uh, imitating them. You know, all that, all that good classic gods and false gods stuff going on. Uh, Hector and Achilles were prophesied to be the the true saviors and, and bring everybody back, uh, but of course they are uh, reborn into this. Uh, Abomination, right? <laughs> and and abomination in the truest sense of the word, it is. Um, so I am I'm going through this this first level right here. This is the lab. the The game struggling. This game is is comprised of of four main sections. We have the laboratory, uh, we have the cave, we have the canyon, and then we have what we call Buzz. And we'll get to all of those later on. But right now we're just getting through the laboratory, the lab. Um, and this is essentially um, kind of the, the classic first tutorial level. It teaches you uh, various things, how to, how to traverse various obstacles, how to avoid uh, certain things, whatnot, how to actually move around. Um, so it's the quickest of the bunch. I'm going to do the first skip right here. You won't even know it happening. To the left, you'll see a button. It went so fast if you didn't catch it right there. Uh, I avoid that button because that button activates party mode, um, and party mode is bad. <laughs> um, that is, for, for many reasons, party mode is bad. Uh, the first reason is it, it initiates about a 10-15 a second unskippable cutscene, which of course, if we, uh, if we can't skip 10-15 seconds, what are we doing as speedrunners? Um, so we, um, we skip that. Uh, but what, what it also does is that section that just followed the button in that party mode, it starts dropping what, what, are, what are called spikies, um, and it's essentially just spike balls that uh, kill you if they touch you. Um, so it makes that, that part a little bit harder to, to get through too. Um, so we avoid the button by just uh, flying right over it. Um, so now we're going to do the second uh, kind of... A more obvious skip. Um, normally you're supposed to uh, ride this elevator like a normal human being might ride an elevator and just ride it up one floor at a time, but instead we just we hit that button a bunch and we break the elevator and launch ourselves up. 
Um, this first section is going to go by rather quickly. Like I said, it's the fastest section, so there's a lot going on. Um, so I'm going to kind of overload you with a lot of information right away. And then as the game goes on, um, it's, a, it's, it's just a lot of the same. It's a lot of the same. We're just getting not really a lot of the, the same, but the same idea, right? Uh, just a 2D physics platformer getting from left to right, trying not to die. Um, in this game, the name, the name of the game being Speed, uh, the idea is uh, basically the secret to being fast in this game is not dying um, outside of moving quickly. Um, so the less we die, the better, um, because dying kicks us back a lot. Um, and <laughs> dying is a lot easier said than done. Um, I, I hope I don't die that much, of course, um, but uh, I probably will die at least a few times, probably. Um, just to give you an idea of, of why, why I probably will die uh, at least once or twice, or maybe four or five times, who knows how many times, hopefully not, not many, but just to give you an idea, uh, there is an achievement for this game that uh, you earn by completing the game without dying a single time. Um, I have a, many, many hours in this game, as you can imagine any speedrunner does in their game. I still do not have that achievement. Um, so so uh, when I say it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, easier said than done to not die, uh, I mean it. Um, so I was going for a... a Kind of a, a fun skip right there. It, it, it's not necessarily way faster than this traditional method, but I was trying to go on the ceiling. Um, but there are spi there were spikies up by those lights, if you noticed, um, that I have to avoid. There's a very specific uh, movement uh, technique that you have to go through um, to be able to actually successfully do that. Of course, I did not succeed in it, which is okay because it doesn't save all that much time. It's maybe about two or three seconds. Um, going on the ceiling to avoid all the platforming underneath. Um, so this game, in addition to being a platformer, it's 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 not necessarily, and in fact it's not a puzzle platformer, um, but it does have these sections like this that are a little puzzle-esque, um, and it has various, like, not really mini-games, but just like changes in, in how we play the game, of course, uh, that's not just platforming. So in this in this section right here, we are supposed to uh, grab those pieces with this giant magnet, um, put them in those acid pits, and then use them to uh, get across the acid pits. Um, now we can do that the normal way, or what we can do instead is we can put them in the acid pits just to get them out of the way, because they are initially blocking uh, where we want to go. Um, so we're just going to get them out of the way, and then we're going to use the magnet to just fly all the way over. And there's the end of lab right there. Um, so that's what we do. <laughs> Very easy peasy lemon squeezy uh, to finish the lab. Um, so like I said, that's very much a, a traditional kind of quote unquote tutorial level. It just teaches you the basics of, of how to use uh, your arms and, and how to get from point A to point B. Um, and there's, there's really nothing special about it. This second section here is the cave. I mentioned before there were four sections. The last three sections are about the same length each. Um, so while that first section only lasted about six, seven minutes, um, these these next ones will last about 15 to 20 minutes each, which are goes to our, of course, our, our full hour time there. Um, but the cave is going to introduce a few different um, obstacles for us to avoid. Uh, some of which will persist for the rest of the game, a few of which are just unique to the cave. Uh, we saw one that was there that I didn't use, and there's there's another one right here too. Uh, those yellow signs, we're going to see those a lot in the canyon section. Um, but the thing about the cave is is all this acid that you see. Um, you noticed right there, that's actually, this is a perfect time to, to mention this, you noticed right there, uh, hopefully you noticed it, um, my arm just went into the wall. Um, that will happen quite a bit. Uh, that's another, uh, I, I said before that, that the name of the game is, is not dying. Another name of the game is to um, try to avoid our arms going into walls um, for just no apparent reason really. Um, sometimes you'll just be going kind of quickly and uh, your arm will just go right into the wall and then you have to respawn it. 
Um, we'll, we'll use that to our advantage at some point, uh, respawning our arms like that. Um, but occasionally you'll see that I, I will, ha I'll get my arm stuck in the wall and I will have to, uh, basically very quickly, uh, get rid of my arm and then bring it back. So I'll just very quickly respawn my arm. Um, and, and that's, that's part of the, that's just part of the game is dealing with that kind of, kind of wackiness. Um, uh, so I said before that, that in the, in the cave here, um, the shtick is kind of all this acid. So of course they give us a way to avoid all the acid um, with these plugs. Um, and right here we get our first um, boss battle. Uh, we're coming up to it anyway. Not like right this second, of course, but in about 10 seconds here. We're gonna get our first boss battle. Um, and there aren't many boss battles and there aren't really all battles necessarily, but they are like big events that happen. Um, near the near the end of sections uh, usually uh, this one happens to happen uh, in the middle of the cave section here so we get Amadeus the first born up until this point I've been using my arms um, and at some point I'll explain exactly how the movement works too because I never got to that I've been using my arms to move the head as they are attached to my body now I get this like weird grotesque um, messed up kind of pinball game so now I'm, I'm using the arms to grab onto Troy's head and uh, throw it around everywhere. Um, and, I'm, and my goal here during this section is to uh, break all of these like weird black and green acid pus balls. I'm not really sure what they are exactly. Um, all I know is that uh, we want to get rid of them all. <laughs> um, and so we are going to do that. This is this is one of the few sections that uh, can either go really well or really poorly. Um, some of it is a little bit lucky, just like the way we bounce around everywhere, like right there. We could have maybe gotten um, that that pus ball again or whatever it was, that growth. Um, you know, it just depends on how it bounces. Um, but it, a lot of it is just the fact that it's very hard to actually throw Troy's head exactly where I want to every single time just because of the way that we that we throw and use these arms and sometimes of course it'll get caught like that um, so this is this is kind of one of one of the few like unpredictable sections Ooh, we got a good that was actually really good that sometimes that sometimes happens like I said it's a little bit random um, so that was that was really fantastic what happened there when it launched from the left and, and got caught in that launcher um, that doesn't always happen, um, but we got it. So that was actually a, that was a that was a solid, that was a super solid uh, Amadeus fight. Um, and so what we get now is uh, the first of two what are called Abomination God blessings, uh, essentially powers, uh, superpowers. Um, this first power that we're gonna get allows us to detach our arms and, and let it crawl everywhere. Uh, we can like move each arm individually, uh, not attached to Troy's body. We can also grab them together and use them as like you'll see very very shortly. Um, what's called an arm rope. Um, they can attach to these like red mouth things. Um, and use them in various ways. Uh, this is a lot of the rest of the cave is using this remote arm blessing. Um, it's about to teach us how to do that with a tutorial, but uh, as with any good tutorial, we hate it, and so we're just going to um, we're just gonna die um, because that's that's kind of how tutorials make me make me feel anyway. Um, so you'll see there there's our our red mouth that we're attaching the arm to. Um, and then here's the arm rope I was talking about. So I detach one arm, I grab, I hold hands aw, with myself, and then I attach it to the red mouth and I swing myself right on over. Um, this section right here, uh, I just always, I always think it's hilarious um, to mention it. Um, this section right here, uh, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take this like red ball with the mouths attached and walk it all the way up um, around, um, but instead of doing that we just uh, we just kind of swing it around with that that sign um, the first time I ever played this game it was co-op and this game I'm fairly certain is mostly intended to be a co-op game where you each control one arm um, the first time I played this game was co-op uh, and it took us about I don't know maybe 20 minutes just to get through that part that I just played that that weird red rock where I 
where I destroyed the rocks uh, to, to clear the path. Uh, it took us about 20 minutes, and now you saw it took took me all of about, I don't know, 8 seconds maybe? Um, <laughs> um, so like I said, the, the name of the game is mostly not dying, but a lot of it is uh, just kind of getting a handle on the wacky movement, because it is, it is wacky movement. Um, and I'll take this opportunity to talk about exactly what the movement is. Um, so the way that we move in this game, you'll... I've said it a hundred times, and I'll say it again, and I'll keep saying it, um, is with our two arms. Uh, we're using the controller uh, because the game recommends a controller um, very heavily. Each, uh, each stick of the controller controls one of Troy's arms. Um, so the right stick controls the right arm, and the left stick controls the left arm. And we got our miner's hat. Fantastic, hooray. <laughs> there are secrets throughout, uh, and all the secrets are hats. Um, so the right, the right stick controls the right arm, and the left stick controls the left arm. Um, if you're not grabbing on to anything, uh, it will, the stick will move the hand. The stick will move where the hand is going. If you are grabbing onto something, then that arm, so if I'm grabbing on with the right arm, then if I move the right stick, come on, there we go. If I move the right stick and I'm grabbing on with the right stick, then that arm will move Troy's head. Um, so that's the, that's the basics of the game. <laughs> now, again, it sounds easier said than done. A lot of the times, um, we're fighting gravity. Your arms are like weak noodles. <laughs> and so you'll try to like lift yourself up in the air and uh, Troy will go nowhere. So uh, being a physics game that, you know, of course is gonna happen all the time. So the, the way we combat that is just with, with strict momentum. So you'll see me moving, well, basically constantly moving uh, to try to get past things uh, because I know that we need to swing ourselves over various things like here. Uh, I'll, I'll always do like a wind up. I'll go back and then, and then I'll swing around and kind of re-get re what we were going for. Um, so it's always... I'm always using momentum to, to get where I need to go and to get around things. Um, and that's really hard to do, uh, and that's what, that's what makes this game so interesting, uh, fun, and, and always frustrating uh, as a co-op game, uh, because building momentum, trying to time that with somebody else, uh, with this very difficult uh, movement system, is, uh, it, it's not the easiest, to say the least. <laughs> um, so I'm about to perform what I call the Rat King skip, which is not really a huge skip, uh, but it is fun. Um, so that was it. That pipe right there uh, takes you to the Rat King, which uh, is much beloved in um, in in some circles. Um, but if you get too close to that pipe, uh, you'll get sucked right into the Rat King. And of course, if you're if you're trying to do a speed run, it wastes about you know 20 seconds trying to trying to get back to the actual game because it's a dead end um, but what you can do over there and what you are supposed to do um, at least the intended why it's there is uh, you go and steal the Rat King's crown which is fantastic because it's one of the secret hats um, but we just skip right over it um, by by just kind of swinging and using our good old momentum um, so uh, I forgot to mention the gears when we got to those but gears are really fun um, in in sometimes a horrible way, um, in that they're they're difficult to traverse, but also they break if you throw rocks at them. Um, now I I just broke those gears with a rock, but I grabbed a second rock here, um, and the reason I did that, you'll see that gear to the right right there, it's not spinning. Um, you may think, okay, well how are you going to break that gear um, if it's not spinning? Normally what you're supposed to do is there are two pressure plates at the bottom here. You're supposed to use your individual arms, your remote arms, uh, and and activate those pressure plates, and then, and then that is when you uh, you turn on the power, and we got over that uh, that button up there. That would turn on the gears uh, and drop a rock down, um, and then 
and then you break it. Luckily for us, the gear's uh, hitbox are always active, so you saw right there, I used that rock that I brought from earlier, um, and I broke the gears anyway, uh, and that progresses uh, the story because we uh, don't need to turn on the power for the other button that's hidden behind it for whatever reason, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Um, I forgot to mention, sorry guys, if you, uh, if you are, are a fan of goats, um, you may not want to watch this whole run because, uh, a few goats, um, we'll just say they, they don't have the happiest time, um, as that one just did, so sorry for you goat lovers out there. Um, yeah, we, you know, we love the goats, but that's just, that's just kind of what happens in, in the world of struggling in this world weird weird world Ooh, we might there we go Ooh. <laughs> I kind of took a risk there throwing it <laughs> um, so we're coming up to we're sort of coming up to the end of uh, of this cave section and then get into the canyon section which I think the canyon section is, is kind of the most interesting it has uh, it has the most speed runny strats uh, in it um, so if you're looking for some crazy stuff uh, going on uh, get ready for the next section because uh, that's when things get get wild uh, and of course I will explain that but we are coming up here to the end uh, of the cave section and the end of this cave section uh, we get to see our good friend the Rat King that I mentioned earlier um, but it's another one of those uh, sections like the uh, Amadeus fight uh, that can go really well or can go really wrong and of course the reason for that is because we get the same movement mechanics that we did from earlier uh, which is arms are going to spawn out of the walls uh, and we're going to grab onto Troy's head and we're going to throw uh, throw him around so um, hopefully this goes really well um, but uh, you know uh, ruffled bricks if you have any uh, anything to say at this time I'm 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 perfectly good with focusing right here and letting you talk uh, because uh, this section stresses me out. <laughs> uh, so if you've got anything to say, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Otherwise, I will keep word vomiting. Here we go. Stress relieving service to the rescue. So, um, yeah, let's talk about the um, uh, prizes that you can win via your donations. So if you do a donation of $2.50, then you can win one of the Tiny Games Pack, which is Starbound. We have a couple of those. Uh, if you donate $5, we, you can win the Small Games Pack, which includes Inmost or Starbound. If you donate $10, you can win the Medium Games Pack, which includes Wargroove or Pathway. If you donate $20, you can win the Big Games Pack, which includes Inmost, Wargroove, Pathway, and Starbound, which together is worth over $70. And if you donate $30, you can win the Mega Games Pack, which includes Blasphemous, Greek Memories of Azor, Nasha Boy, Neon Abyss, Ukulele, and The Impossible Lair, all of which together is worth over $125. And don't forget, all donations go towards Child's Play. So, back to you there, Sparky. Perfect timing. I knew I knew you'd do me. I knew you'd do me good there. <laughs> you got me right through to the end of that, and uh, we we got through it first time. That that's one of the few sections that, uh, if I die during this run, uh, it is common for me to die. So we we got there and we finished that, um, and uh, and and I'm to kind of build off of you there, talking about those prizes. If anybody here is uh, you know thinking, oh I don't know. Uh, you know, if I don't know if I want a prize, or you know, I, I want to donate, but I don't know how much I want to donate. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you a little bit of a, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a, of a push, of an encouragement. Usually, what I do is uh, I will donate X amount of dollars per death, um, and and usually ask, uh, you know, viewers if if you are if you're somebody who wants to be motivated by that kind of thing, uh, you know throw a dollar per death. Uh, at the end of the run, it'll tell us how many times we died during it. Um, so we can we can see exactly uh, exactly how much you, you might want to donate. Um, so I, I highly encourage you to do a dollar per death, or two dollars per death of this game. Obviously, um, I personally, uh, for the sake of my run, don't want to die any times. So I hope it's zero. Uh, but for the sake of, uh, of the charity, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and if you're and if you're thinking you're going to donate, uh, then then I hope uh, you can match, uh, you know, that for for each death. So so that's my that's my uh, shtick for for that. 
I just want to say that if I'd done a dollar per death in my run, then I'd be bankrupt by now. So it's, <laughs> it doesn't work for everyone. <laughs> if, if I would have done it, if I would have said that uh, the first time I played this game ever, uh, yeah, that would that would certainly be the case. Um, but of course, uh, now that now that I kind of know what I'm doing in this game, uh, it, and and just so just so everybody knows, it's usually under ten dollars. Um, so if you're committing now and you're like, yeah, I'll do a dollar per death, ooh, but you know how many times is how many times is he gonna die during this run? Uh, usually it's under 10, so you know you're not you're not looking at a crazy amount. What I'm doing right here is I'm going to attempt uh, uh, a fun skip, um, and I say attempt because I don't always get it, and I did not get it, um, but that's okay. Um, I'll explain what it is uh, right here. So there's this short, very short cutscene that we could have uh, skipped of this guy jumping on the hiker, and it's basically just introducing the. Uh, that mechanic of the hikers um it's just explaining uh we're gonna have these hikers a little bit throughout the canyon um and if we hold on to them for too long they'll fall and we'll fall with them um if i would have gotten that skip uh all i would have done was i would have been on the ceiling at that point uh and i wouldn't have had to wait for uh the hiker to come back up so it would have saved about i don't know five six seconds it's not a whole lot, but you know, any amount of time is a good amount of time, especially in an hour long run, anything we can save is, is grit. Uh, I mentioned before that that, that Rat King escape uh, was one section where, uh, you know, if, if you can kind of count on me dying, uh, that was one of them. This is another section that is possible, uh, only because these uh, yellow signs are very finicky. If you don't grab onto them the right way, you won't swing the right way, and if you're not swinging the right way, uh, you won't get you won't get the launch in the way that you want it. Uh, luckily, we we got that launch pretty good, um, but we are going to use the momentum that we can get from these uh, signs to do another uh, fun skip. Uh, the good thing about the cool thing about this skip is it's actually somewhere where you're intended to go. Um, it just so happens that it skips a really really horrible section. Um, a horrible meaning um, one that before I did this skip, uh, obviously this this part of the game was always here. I just never thought to put it in a run because I was never, never I was always like, oh, I don't need a hat because uh, that's all that we're getting up here um, is is just a hat. Um, you can see it well. You can see it right there to the left. Um, that that kind of skull. Um, oh, we got a bad launch on it though. Um, that'll sometimes happen with the with the geysers. I forgot to mention the geysers as part of um, as part of the introduction to the canyon. Um, geysers are great because they get us where we're going, but they are horrible because um, <laughs> you don't always get the launch that you want. And right there, we did not get the launch we wanted. So uh, there's at least one dollar for you. Like I said, I usually die, you know, a few times. Um, so there we go. Okay. Um, there, that section that we skipped is a section full of uh, cacti and uh, those sticks that we've been kind of launching ourselves off a few times. Um, and it's really, really hard to uh, get through that without dying. Uh, and that was, <laughs> in, in the early days of running uh, this game, that was definitely the, the highest source of frustration uh, and... and time losses and deaths and, and all that fun stuff that we don't like. Oh my goodness, these geysers are just being powerful, man. Like I said, the name of the game is uh, Not Dying, and these geysers are, are not wanting me to have it. Uh, it's, it's difficult with the geysers uh, because if you're not sitting in them the exact right way, uh, then they will launch you in, in an unexpected way. So it can be hard to predict and adjust where you're going to actually end up. <laughs> um, so that's why I said we, you know, we love and hate the geysers, of course. They get, they get us where we're going, but, you know, in, in the least uh, nice way possible. Uh, so this is one of my favorite uh, short sprint sections. It's, it's highly different than anything else in the game. If you remember those, uh, those flash, uh, I say if you remember, they're still around. Uh, if you know those flash games that are like, basically, um, you just use the, the arrow keys to, to control a motorcycle going down uh, and like not tip over, uh, that's basically what we're doing right now. We're just doing that uh, with our arms. Uh, so we're just controlling this motorcycle. Uh, 
while listening to some great tunes. Uh, so that's uh, that's what I love about this. I usually uh, like to just let everybody enjoy the great tunes that, that happen. But uh, you know, Ruffle Bricks, if you have anything else to say right now, now's a now's a good time too. I've got about 30, 45 seconds until the end of this section, and then I'm going to keep going. Certainly. I uh, just want to remind everyone that Indiethon is a tri-annual charity event showcasing all types of indie games. We we'll bring you speedruns of games you may not have heard before to help child's play support their network of hospitals and domestic violence shelters. It's a place where children can feel safe, play games, and get better. Back to you, Sparky. Perfect. Um... So yeah, we're just like I said, we're just we're just going from left to right. It's a it's a pretty standard platformer. There's not much super interesting stuff going on for the next, you know, maybe 2 minutes or so, but after those 2 minutes, it gets about 100 million times more interesting. Um, and that's when we get the real fun stuff. Ooh, we got <laughs> yeah, the geysers. Man, we are having some real bad uh some geyser help this time uh what what our goal is for that what just happened is uh to have that initial geyser that was to the left launch us all the way just up here through that geyser that's uh shooting down but of course we ended up all the way at the bottom which is fine we just lose about you know 15 20 seconds uh getting back up uh and it's and that's that's tough because we have to wait for that geyser um that's shooting down to uh stop shooting down because it, it it is impossible to uh, get past it otherwise um, you just have to wait for it so we play a little bit of the waiting game luckily we can get up it in in two two or three cycles depending on uh, how well we how well we can scale the wall um, and actually this is a good this is a good moment to uh, mention how exactly I'm, I'm usually scaling these walls. You'll notice that I just go in like these huge circles. Uh, again, I said before, uh, we, we just build momentum everywhere. So, so you'll hear, you'll hear me when I swing around, I'll usually like hit the wall because I have so much momentum. Uh, and the only reason I'm really mentioning this right now is because uh, in, in, a, in a few short moments, um, we are going to perform uh, one of the <laughs> one of the favorite skips of the uh, of the Discord group uh, called Agamemnon Skip, and we are going to need to not move in that way in order to do the skip correctly. And I'll explain it when we get there. It'll be right after uh, all these zip lines, uh, which are also a great time. Uh, we'll we'll get to Agamemnon Skip, uh, which, like I said before, uh, things are about to get incredibly interesting. So you'll notice when I, like I said, when I'm doing movement now, I'm just kind of swinging around and uh, allowing Troy's head to sort of bash all over the place and with, with n no regard for safety or, uh, or care for anything. But of course, uh, as I mentioned, we are going to need to avoid that. Uh, and it's a lot, again, it's one of those things that's a lot easier said than done. I'm setting up a, a very specific throw here that hopefully we get, there we go, we just go right over both of the, the cactus bunches there with the ropes. Um, sometimes when your arms, you'll, you, you may have noticed right there, sometimes when your arms, and you may have noticed earlier too, uh, when your arms respawn, they, uh, they respawn all like twisted up. <laughs> uh, that is another one of those moments where I have to respawn my arm. So here is, uh, here's Agamemnon's skip. So what normally happens right here is uh, you just go flying down here and uh, you, you go on this, this gooey stuff and it is slippery and you can't grab onto it and you run into this hand right here which initially- ah jeez ah okay well now you can see the initiation of it. Luckily I can I can skip this this anyway but now we have to watch about 30 seconds of it. Um, so what what's happening right here is we're initiating um, what is what is commonly thought of as the uh, dating simulator. So we're just going to go to Troy's Lair and, and, and start from the beginning. Um, so that lost about 30 seconds. Uh, but we're going to climb up that hand without doing this like circular motion. So we hopefully don't initiate that. Um, on the plus side, what what that did right there uh, by initiating that, I got rid of the uh, the horrible music that would play. Um, the music is great. It's just very loud and obnoxious and doesn't go away because this is a glitch. So I have to. You'll see. I have to like climb up with straight arms. 
um, going this whole time, uh, so I don't touch the encounter plane that I'm that I'm grabbing onto. Uh, and there we go. There's, they just, uh, the developers just didn't put it all the way to the ceiling, and so we can just go right over it. Uh, and so rather than uh, going through the dating simulator, and yes, it's a dating simulator, um, that, that three-headed abomination, you, uh, you basically answer questions that they ask and end up dating uh, one of the heads. Um, but we skip it because all it is is uh, four minutes of, of mashing A, which is fun and interesting uh, in, in the sense that the dating simulator is... is has no place in a game like this, um, which is why it has every place in a game like this. Um, <laughs> and so, and so we just skip over that that four minutes of b mashing A. Now, I said before how things get really, really interesting now, and that's because normally when you complete the dating simulator, uh, you would get the second abomination god blessing. Um, the first one, of course, was the remote arms that we got earlier. The second one is is called time alteration, but it what it does is it just slows down time, which allows you to do all the things I'm doing a lot easier, <laughs> um, but obviously a lot slower in some regards. So, in in just just as an idea, normally what you're supposed to do right here is use the time alteration to slow down time and grab these arrows as they go past and throw them out of the way. But we have to sneak by them uh, in real time without any any kind of help or anything. Um, for for the majority of, of the rest of, of the canyon, it's not a big deal. There is one part of it that it is absolutely uh, very, very difficult. It is, it is the hardest part of a of a run where we where we use Agamemnus skip um, and I should mention uh, that you may think that Agamemnus skip is a glitch um, and I would agree with you but apparently the developers and the rest of the speedrunning community doesn't necessarily agree with me so we can keep uh, Agamemnus skip in glitchless runs which is why this is still considered a glitchless run um, but yeah all of these things we would normally be um, We'd normally be slowing to oh jeez. We'd normally be slowing down time to be able to grab onto all these spears, um, and then they'd just like take us to where we were going. That was a weird death. I usually don't die right there. Um, that's why I said oh jeez. So <laughs> don't mind me. Uh, just kind of not doing what I should be doing, but doing what I should be doing at the same time. Um, so yeah, normally you'd you'd slow mo, grab all these arrows out of the way, uh, and be on your merry way. This section that I'm doing right here, I approach from the ceiling, so I don't have to grab that that arrow that's moving or that spear that's moving diagonally. Um, so I approach it from from the ceiling, and we can just skip over here. So what we're gonna do is we are just gonna set up, set ourselves up right here. We're gonna put our arm right there, open this up, and then rather than slow mo because we don't have it and grabbing onto that spear, we're just gonna spin ourselves right up on here and, and go right over. Um, when I first discovered Agamemnus Skip, I was incredible. I was elated. Uh, I was like, "Hooray! I skipped. Uh, I skipped four and a half minutes of of mashing A. Uh, this is the best thing in the world." And then that thought was immediately followed up with, "Oh goodness gracious! Can I beat the rest of the game uh, without time alteration?" Uh, obviously, the answer is yes. Uh, you you know that. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. Um, but it definitely took some some planning and 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 figuring out uh, to, to make it happen. One part that it took some planning is this part. This isn't the hardest part that I was talking about earlier, um, but normally you'd slow-mo and be able to avoid all these spike balls, but if we push that, that button to activate the spear at the right moment, we can just fly right past it without any slow-mo at all. Uh, this is another part where slow-mo is nice your first time through. Uh, we don't actually need it. You can grab this spear, which is fun, but we go fast enough where even if we avoided that spear, we could make it to the end of that ceiling crush uh, section right there uh, without without slow mo at all and without without the spear and without worry. 
Um, this is the hardest part of the game. Uh, hardest part of the run. I shouldn't say the game, it's the hardest part of the run uh, because we don't have slow-mo. Normally what you do, of course, is you just grab that spear um, and, and be on your merry way, but because we do not have slow-mo, we need to do this the hard way. Um, so you'll notice I'm grabbing on to the ground and throwing myself over the over the arrow. And we got it first try, which is awesome. Uh, but I'm doing it in, in a very specific way. So what I so what you have to do is you have to obviously throw over the arrow. Um, because it the arrow is just low enough where you can't just go right over it, but it's just high enough. Uh, where you have to actually get momentum and throw yourself over. Now, the other component of of that, what I just did, of that um, of that arrow section, was uh, you actually you have to be the one to regenerate your arms. Uh, you may have noticed, or may not have, um, that if you lose your arm to some reason like if one of these arrows were to hit just my arm i would lose that arm and it would regenerate if that happens it takes a few seconds to regenerate um however if you regenerate your arm on your own it regenerates instantly and so that section i was jumping over the arrow you can uh just hold yourself up with your arms in such a way that the arrow will go right under you um, but it will kill both of your arms, uh, and the time it takes uh, to respawn your arm from from it dying and you not respawning it yourself just so happens to be pretty much the same amount of time that it takes for that arrow to, to get launched again. And so you're kind of out of luck and you can't really progress forward. So what you have to do there is you have to throw yourself over the arrow, and as you are throwing yourself over the arrow, you have to respawn both of your arms at the same time so that they don't die from the arrow and they respawn instantly and you still make forward progress. <laughs> um, so it, 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 it looks simple, I'm just jumping over the arrow, but there's a lot going on to it. Uh, you also have to grab your arms close enough where you get enough momentum to get over the arrow. Um, this is the end of the canyon section, this is the big, the big fall, the big platform fall section. Um, it looks very scary, uh, but you'll notice that what all we have to do is sit right here on this specific section of the platform, uh, and we will just fall straight down and avoid pretty much everything. Most of the things will go right over us, like this arrow or those spike balls from earlier, but there are a few things. There are three arrows that we need to grab. I've already grabbed the first two. Um, this arrow is going to go right over our head. Uh, we'll grab one more arrow, and then otherwise we just stay on this this one specific section, and we just fall right to the end. Uh, when we get to the end, the platform is going to fall on a group of mushrooms, and those mushrooms are going to spew some spores, and then we are going, we as Troy, are going to be under the effects of uh, mushrooms, <laughs> uh, which is the fourth section buzz and so now you know why the last section is called buzz um so there we go we made it through everything we didn't die which is always good because this is about two and a half minutes two minutes 15 seconds or so of just falling and here we go crushing some uh mushrooms we get some spores and now troy is about to um basically hallucinate things are gonna get weird if you didn't think they were weird before things are gonna get pretty wacky now um, so before things uh, get real wacky and start to start to move and transition uh, pretty quickly uh, I don't know if ruffled bricks you have any uh, if you have any other other things to say at the moment uh, but now would be a, a good time to, to share any thoughts or or anything you have to say with the with the people absolutely I'd just like to remind everyone that Indithon is raising money for Child's Play. In addition to helping hospitals, they have provided over 200 games kits to domestic violence shelters all over the United States through their domestic violence program. These kits come with a fully loaded Xbox One with environment appropriate games and are designed to create an inviting environment for young survivors of domestic violence. Learn more about their domestic abuse program at childsplaycharity.org. Back to you, Sparky. Bam. 
All right, fantastic. Like I and like I said before, if you're uh, if you're wanting to donate and you need a little bit of a motivation, uh, I am you know kind of encouraging you to do a dollar or how, whatever amount you want, fifty cents. It's, it doesn't matter. Um, per death in this run, I think so far, if I'm counting correctly, um, which I don't really usually count because I don't concern myself with that so much. We'll get the count at the end anyway. I think it's up to three maybe so far, maybe four. Uh, so you're up, you're up three, four dollars for, for a great for a great cause. Um, so, you know, I, I highly encourage you to donate. I, of course, will be will be putting putting some money towards per death um, as well. Um, but yeah, uh, we are in the last section here, the buzz section, um, which is just a, a combination of basically everything else that we've done up to this point. It's just more platforming, more more fun stuff. Uh, we do get these bouncy mushrooms, which is great, um, and we do get that pink stuff uh, pretty much all throughout. Uh, this whole buzz section is made up of of a few shorter sections. So buzz is the fourth major section. Uh, but there are uh, a few sections that make up the, the entirety of Buzz. Uh, this first section is, uh, of course, the aptly named uh, Mushrooms. Uh, or we call it, we call it Mushrooms. Um, and, uh, of course, I think you can guess why we call it that. Um, but you'll see, you'll see all the different um, sections that, that are included in Buzz as we go on. Uh, essentially, we are trying to get to the ends of these sections. We're going to go through a, a nice... Uh, Door portal um, and uh, and not die from arrows. Oh, we just narrowly avoided that one. Uh, and then that activates the next section. So here's our second uh, smaller section of the buzz, which is the absolute fastest uh, section in the whole game. Uh, of course, it's 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 the literal space jam, um, or the, just the we just call it the basketball section for short. But here's literal space jam. Where we are, of course, uh, playing basketball with ducks, uh, and ducks is a big theme uh, throughout the buzz section. You will see that very, very much apparently um, by the end of the entire game, and uh, I, I will not need to really explain that when we get there, but uh, we're just going to do a little slam dunk there, uh, get two points for the home team, and uh, keep on keeping on, uh, so Troy for... Troy for the team. Uh, and now we get to the Spider-Man section, your uh, friendly neighborhood flesh monster, as the game calls it. Uh, which which is... It, it changes how we move just a little bit, but not really at the same time. We're still grabbing onto the walls and swinging ourselves over, but now we can grab onto like any part of it. So we can just grab onto the whole wall, which is really cool. And I, I like the way that this, uh, this section moves. Um, you'll notice that I'm, I'm actually moving upside down uh, throughout this section. Ow. It's much faster uh, to to move upside down just just by the way. So right here is what I'm talking about. I'm moving upside down, so the arms are on opposite sides that they should be. Uh, it's much faster just just the way that the that the arms move the heads when you grab onto the walls. Um, to move upside down than it is to to move right side up. You can you can lift the head up a lot uh, a lot easier. Um, so that's why I'm doing that. Um, but again, it's a lot it's a lot more of the same. There's nothing really nothing really crazy going on in in this section uh, besides a lot of just swinging um, swinging around and, and, and kind of flying uh, and looking like Spider-Man, <laughs> being your friendly neighborhood flesh monster. Um, Oops. And avoiding ducks, avoiding ducks at all costs. Uh, again, that's uh, that's a big theme of the buzz section. <clears throat> Climbing walls, avoiding ducks, and flying in pink stuff. Uh, you know, just like just like your your standard life motto Perfect. that I think. Um, after this section, we're going to get to the uh, the speech sex section. Uh, I believe the game calls it the Galaxy Brain Summit. Um, but it's where we get our second, what I might consider a glitch, uh, thing that I do. Um, but again, the community doesn't really consider a glitch. I'll leave it up to you to decide, really. Um, but, you know, for the purposes of the run, it's not a glitch. So don't call it a glitch, uh, even though I want to. Uh, so we're just going to do speech skip soon here. Um, 
If I click down on the sticks, you'll Sweet. hear Troy say something. Among the yeah. salt. Chirp, chirp. Chirp, chirp. Slap. Hold me, brother. Hold me, brother. Poggers in the chat. Ouch. Poggers in the chat, right? So Troy says various things. Normally, you'd do that on this box, and you'd give uh, about a minute minute 15 ish long speech wow. uh much Thank like you. the uh dating simulator it is uh unskippable so it's it's another like unskippable cutscene um it, unless unless you're somebody like me and you want to really skip it and you just uh you just sneak right past that door <laughs> there's a little tiny gap uh that is just barely big enough to fit troy's head through um that we just we just skip right over the speech. We don't have to listen to to the speech. Although I will say that the speech itself is uh, highly entertaining. So yeah. if you do plan on playing this game, uh, don't skip it. Don't skip anything in this game the first time you play. Uh, it is it is very entertaining. The dating simulator and the speech are are some of the funniest things that happen. It's really the only time you get uh, dialogue besides the intro that we skipped. <laughs> um, so you you kind of. You miss out on all the all the fun dialogue that happens uh, in these runs because uh, it is it is very interesting and fun. Um, but that's that's the speech skip. We just sneak past the door. The first time I found that skip, I actually laughed out loud to myself, and I don't do that very much. I don't if I'm if I'm doing something on my own, I don't often just like burst into laughter. Um, on my own time, and I did during that. Um, I I went through the I snuck through the through that that tiny crack above the door. Uh, it it activated the next section, and I I I burst into a little bit of laughter because um, it was so Slap. ridiculous. Um, so this is this is one of my favorite sections is this pre-alpha um, section because it's kind of like it's almost like zero gravity. You use your arms to detach and attach to things uh, a lot to traverse things. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm skipping uh, that bottom right. You'll see that that kind of drawing of a house. Uh, you can see to the, the very right bottom right corner. There's an eraser there. Um, you're supposed to go over there, ride a paper clip. Um, very, very slowly, uh, you cannot control the speed of the paperclip and move some pencils to block some, like, falling acid. Uh, but instead, we just grab onto the bridge that we used before, um, and we just, we just Please. climb on top of, on top of everything. Um, I'm going to get this checkpoint, uh, because last, last time I did a marathon, I died at this part. And uh, I went all the way back to the beginning, so I'm not going to let that happen again. Um, <laughs> so don't mind me as I uh, just take one safety checkpoint. Okay. <clears throat> so what we're going to do right here is... So normally, you'd, right there, you'd, you'd pull all the wow. pencils up and, and create a bridge. We only pu we pull up the one that we actually need. And then... Right here, you're supposed to build a, a bridge uh, by stacking things and then putting the pencil on the top. Uh, luckily for us, uh, the pencil fits Ow. ever Ouch. so perfectly in, uh, in that space, and we can just not die when we do this, and we can just grab right up here and uh, go right into the door, which is perfect, and, it, and it's a great time. Um, so we are coming on, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, ducks are a huge thing in this run, and we are coming on to the, wow. the biggest duck Sage. of them all, and the reason that uh, ducks are everywhere and our enemies yes. and all this, mm -hmm. uh, all this fun stuff. Uh, so this is what the, the, the development team calls the Shadow of the Duck Lossus fight. Um, and what we're going to get is we're going to get a giant duck. Uh, and it's gonna have spears in it, and and it's our goal to essentially do, uh, as as their name implies, it's essentially a Shadow of the Colossus style fight. We're going to climb on this metaphorical duck. We are going to push in the spears and uh, defeat the duck in that way. So it's it's very much a Shadow of the Colossus, uh, but Shadow of the Duck Colossus, uh, if you will, and the developers absolutely will. Um, so this fight is, is pretty straightforward. Um, it has some wow. things that, wow. that could potentially Down. kill us, of course. Um, ooh, like that, but that's okay. Be if we die right there, it's, it's soon enough in the beginning. Um, the, 
The bad part about dying at any other point during this fight is it will reset everything. So, if, so say I was to push in two spears um, and then die, uh, it would it would send me back to the beginning, and I would have to go back and push in those two spears. Um, so we really, really don't want to die during this fight, uh, and we're gonna try to avoid that as best as we can. Uh, one of the things that can happen during this fight, and does happen a few times, but if we move quick enough right there, good. Um, it doesn't kill us, but the duck will, will do that. It'll basically throw a tantrum <laughs> and uh, throw us around everywhere. If you're on the underside of the duck, this is uh, really, really bad news, because you can hold on to the duck all you want, but usually that thrashing about that the duck does, uh, it will like rip your arms <laughs> and uh, and basically send you off of the duck. Uh, so Sweet. if we get around it quick enough, which we did, uh, we avoid being thrown off by the duck doing that. Every time we push in a spear, uh, the big duck will send little ducks as minions to try to kill us. If we go quick enough here, we can avoid this one altogether, but basically what they do is they they target you and then like launch at you like a missile. Uh, once they start launching, they they don't deviate from that path, um, and so we use that to our advantage to avoid them, because uh, it's going to send two at us now. The the big duck is going to send two little ducks at us now, um, and so we oh no, I didn't realize that feather was there. That's okay. So once it starts launching at us, it doesn't it doesn't change paths. So if we just stay where we are and then let the duck launch, uh, we can we can avoid them pretty easily, which is nice. Uh, so we're that's a that's a pretty decent okay. decent metaphorical duck fight uh, outside of falling right there, kind of kind of near that not too long ago. Um, but that was a that was a solid How? solid duck fight. Um, yeah. And so in about a minute. Uh, a little under a minute is we're gonna have time, uh, so the duck is gonna eat us, and we are going to see the uh, the mastermind behind everything that has happened so far, all his hallucinations and, and controlling the duck and whatnot. Uh, we are going to see good old Morpheus um, in the in the gut of the duck. So. It's our goal to grab onto Morpheus, pull him off of all those things, um, and throw him into the acid. When Morpheus lands in the acid, that is time, just uh, just for whoever's timing. Um, so that is time. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get you a few seconds before that. Um, so normally what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to tear him down, uh, and then he spawns those like red mouth things that we that we have been attaching our arms to. Uh, he spawns those on his head, and, and you are supposed to... Uh, attach your arms to them like normal and then walk him up kind of as if he was like a new head a new troy head for you um but we're, what we're gonna do is uh we are going to just rip him down on our own and we're just gonna throw him in the acid without ever attaching arms so he's being finicky right now come on there we go okay so time is going to come in a few seconds here, right when he lands in the acid. And time. There it is. Okay. Um, so that's struggling. We uh, defeated Morpheus and everything else that uh, that happened along the way. <laughs> and we did it in a good amount of time. Uh, under an hour, like I, like I promised you all. Um, so there, there you have it. That's struggling. It is as weird as it looks. It's as fun as it looks. Um, and, and I hope you all enjoyed the run. I hope you all enjoyed the game. Uh, I highly, highly, highly encourage you um, to, to try it out for yourself. Um, it can be frustrating the first time you play it. Uh, my, my casual playthrough took me about seven hours the very first time. Many people it takes, uh, you know, 13 hours more, more than that. Some people, you know, quicker than me. Um, but it will take you quite some time just to, just to get your bearings. Um, I highly encourage you to join the, the Discord. Uh, the, our speedrunning Discord is, is just the developer Discord. Um, the community there is, is fantastic. The developers will often um, show up for for these marathons as long as I let them know ahead of time. More than two hours. Oops, uh, about this one. Sorry, um, but they will show up, and they 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 were they were some of the people who were excited when we finally got the game under an hour. They didn't think it could be done, but they they show up all the time. Um, it's great. The developers are, are very. Uh, 
very supportive of, of what we do, uh, which is breaking their game, which not a lot of developers uh, uh, are, are supportive of that. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's struggling. Um, check check it out. Check out uh, you know chasing rats and um, they make some good stuff. This is currently their only game, but you know check them out. Uh, of of course, uh, thank you to Indithon and and Team Seventeen. One of the other games I run is Moving Out, a Team Seventeen game. So uh, you know I, I'm on your side too. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so there, there's going to be a, a quick credit scene. Um, and then and then we'll get our, our death total at the end of that. So it's about a, a, another, you know, 45 seconds to a minute. Uh, well, that's what, that's what it feels like to me. It might be a little bit longer than that. But uh, but if, if you have anything uh, to say uh, while we wait for our uh, our death total, for those uh, hoping to donate, um, now is a, is a great time because you'll just see everybody who's, who's worked on the game. Well, firstly, I just want to say uh, GG, cheers, Sparky, for that uh, wonderful wonderful run that you just did uh, we'll just give a quick shout out to Team 17 since you mentioned them as uh, IndieFon is sponsored by Team 17 and Team 17 are an independent indie developer and publisher and they have kindly provided us with our awesome grand prize Team 17 and Unicube's Brutal Survival Management Simulator Sheltered 2 is out now on PC visit their website at team17.com and check out their full roster of indie games. Yeah, thank Any, you. Uh, did yeah. you shout yourself out, by the way, Spark? Oh, I, I, I know. I always forget to do that because uh, I just I'm, I'm here, <laughs> so I always forget. That's the one thing I do forget to do. Um, yes, I am Sparky McCalc One. Uh, that, that is what I am everywhere. Um, I, I, I'm on YouTube, Twitch. Um, you know, it, wherever you see uh, Twitter, wherever you see Sparky McCalc One, that is me. Um, so I, I try to keep things uh, the same everywhere. Um, so uh, you know, feel free to feel free to stop by wherever I am and say hi. Um, I, I do obviously speedrun struggling and, and a few other games and, and, and stream otherwise. Um, like most of us do, um, I, I always love you know meeting people at these, especially these speedrunning events. I've found they're some of the most uh, they're some of the most welcoming and kind-hearted people out there. So thank you to all of you uh, out there watching and, and, and participating in the run. Um, but yeah, that's me. I'm Sparky McCalc One. This is struggling, and this is the end of struggling here. Um, this is the night's post-credit scene. Uh, now no parties are allowed. Um, so that's uh, that's just the kind of tongue-in-cheek kind of humor that they that they get in this game uh, of course uh, at the very beginning they they said congratulations Dave for whatever he did uh, and uh, that was a that was what allowed Troy to escape so now of course no party no party allowed um, and uh, our good friend Troy is is back stuck in the test tube of course with the minor hat that we uh, collected along the way um, and uh, yeah, like, like I said, I'm Sparky. Uh, this is struggling, and uh, we'll we'll get you a, a death count here for anybody hoping to donate. And then uh, and then that's all I've got for you for for tonight. Uh, I can't say thank you enough. Um, so thank you to everybody. And uh, there you go, four deaths. So if you want one dollar per death, there's your four deaths. Fifty cents, there's your two two dollars. Um, and uh, that's. That's it. That's how I cap it off. I show you how many times I died. I cry about it a little bit because it wasn't zero, and then uh, I send I send you with uh, whatever you want to do with that. <laughs> yep, that death count is legally binding, by the way. It, so it, yep. get donor. <laughs> <laughs> You're required. <laughs> But thanks once again, Sparky, for that run. That is it from me for tonight for the hosting duties. I have stayed up all night to do this, but uh, with the amount of nightmare fuel I've just seen, uh, who needs <laughs> sleep? So um, I'm going to be handing you over to Floha258 to take over from me very shortly. And the next run that you are going to see after the break is uh, Sabera Mesias doing uh, Greek Memories of Azor any percent. So stick around for that and see you in a bit.